Um, because we decided to help with tonight's message, we thought, what better way to get a message going than with a good old-fashioned fashion show? Who likes a good fashion show? Come on! I've got two fellows here with me. Cody Hill. Our Benjamin Steven Levinson, our high school intern. And they're going to help me greet our lovely fashion show individuals that are here to show off their beautiful fashion. So be ready as they come in this door right here. First, we're going to introduce to you Ralph. Ralph's coming wearing our sports. He is clothed and tied with everything sports. Look at how beautiful he is. He is sports, you know what I'm saying? Just makes the outfit. So flawless. The cheer top, the swim cap, the baseball pants. Come on. Oh. It's just like the smoothest sports in the world. I mean, doing that. If, if you are this good, you can look this good. If you are all about your sports, you can cover yourself up with it all. And baby, this is how good you don't look, right? Think it James better. Come on, James has nothing. Right, you know, you know. This is nothing. Joining him on our beautiful runway today is Ali Lantier. Come, come forward, my love. Wow, there's just so many colors. She just is so fashion oriented. Girl cannot just come in wearing one outfit. No, no. She wants to look good for your wife. She's got it all going on, right? I cannot pull those socks. I mean, she's got stripes. They just they go so She's got the ties for that kind of ooh, extra girl look. She got your little ooh, Hawaiian kind of look going on here. Kicking it back here with the street look, I'm just saying. I mean, Allie comes up here, even the leather jacket, come on, throw back to the 80s, gentlemen. You know I'm not good in the back. That's retro right there. I mean, if you are so all about fashion, you want to be like Allie. You want to be decorated with all you've got. You, got. Man, you can't just wear one outfit to school, no, baby girl. You need to wear every outfit. So you can be ready to just switch it, right? Y'all know what I mean. Y'all know what I mean. All right, coming in third. Me, Miss Abby Jeff. She's modeling our work. And using the Mac? That's impressive. In the house collection. With the in-the-house collection, she's got her games ready to go. She's got, she's got her movies ready to go. She's got her laptop ready to go. When you are in the house, you want to be in the house. This is what you're all about. you got to go with it. Some of y'all know. Some of you, come on. How many of y'all, you have some of this look at home? Come on. How many of you have some of this look at home? You got your, you always with your computer. You got your game, Chris. You got your game, right? You know. You got some of this look. And get it off. You got to get the look. Get the look. Oh, no. Own it, baby. Own it. I just now, don't care. I don't know. She's got it going on. I'm telling you. Now, speaking of got it going on, some people, some people are just popular, baby. I'm excited. They know everybody in Eva. And when they come in, they got it all. They, they represent all their friends. You know, you wonder if your friends represent you. Oh, this is the friend of all friends. She's representing all her friends. Come on in, Casey Ivey. Come on. She's representing her friends. She knows. It's all about my friends. There's so many friends I can't count. Right? I wouldn't even, I don't even think I can put my face up at this point. I don't have many friends. I mean, some of y'all suck. They suck. Now, sometimes when you have all those friends, it's hard to see where you're going. Because you're trying to make sure all your friends are taking care of us. Look at how good she looks. Look out there. She got, I don't know who this friend is on top of which one. I don't know. This is so many friends. All right. But some of y'all, you know. You know. Some of y'all have this. I don't even know that. I mean, you got these four of You got these four that's going on. We got our sports look. Just, some of you know you wear it all. You got all that look. You got your friend look. I got all my friends. I'm sporting them all. Look at me checking out. You know who my friends are, baby. All my people. You got your fashion. She just. Dex it all out, but I can please everybody. And I look good, I look hot, so fast. Well. And then we got our in the house look. Always, I can be in my house, I can play my games, play my computer. I got it. But it can get better. There's no way. We got Tyler representing my grave look. Come on. Wait, what? Where's that? I, I don't, why would you dress like that? You should not dress like that. 
I'm sure you've just defied every fashion magazine and what they've had to say over the last decade. <laughs> the 80s have more fashion than you do. That's just so awkward looking. I don't even know, how is he doing that? Well, this is the Greg collection. So if he's probably in the Greg, he's probably laid out. It's on me. You would think? He's dead. He's thinking. Looks pretty lively. <laughs> <laughs> now, which would you rather look like? Which would you rather look like? Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Which one of these would you rather represent? Think about it. You're not sports. You're not friends look. You're not in the house. You're not fashion look. Which one would you rather represent? Or the grades look? I'm just saying. Now, some people get kind of confused. Because, see, they think the grave look is a whole lot different than what they just saw with the fashion look and the friend look and the sports look and the in-the-house look. But you know what? The grave look really ain't a whole lot different, y'all. The grave look's not a whole lot different. It's what you choose to wrap yourself up in that honestly keeps you from living the life that's truly life. And we hear in the Gospels, in the book of John, Jesus stepped out. He went to a friend, and some of y'all know the story. But it's about Lazarus. And Jesus is off for years, and Lazarus was dead. And we know that Jesus can heal. But see, Jesus didn't come and heal. And see, Mary and Martha, man, these are two friends of his. Lazarus was a friend. And so these people were like, what's wrong with him? Why is he not saving him? Why is he not bringing him to life? And see, in their culture, in their tradition, after three days, really there's no way to word this except um, the body begins to decay and stinketh. So, as opposed to the first three days where I guess there was potential of you coming back to life, um, they knew that after three, I mean, just seal the deal, you're gone, you're done. You're done. See, Lazarus was buried and put away four days. In the book of John, chapter 11, starting in verse 38. So open up to the book of John, chapter 11. If you don't have a Bible, we'll have it up on the screen. But if you do have a Bible, open it and leave it to there. John 11, verse 38. Here's what the gospel said. Here we go. Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time, what I say, he's thinking, by this time there's a bad odor, for he's been there four days. And Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped in strips of linen and a cloth around his face. And Jesus said to them, to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Jesus comes up to the tomb and he says, Lazarus, come out. And I love what he prayed right before. He's like, look, Father, I'm doing this so that you get revealed. Jesus is trying, uh, Sometimes he's like, you know what? I don't want a public display. I don't want whatever. But then there's times where Jesus says, you know what? We need a public display. Because I'm sick and tired of the world acting like a bunch of fools and not knowing that God is God. And I'm here in his name. So Jesus says, hey, God, we're about to do this. And you and I already know that you can do this. But we're going to do this so that they know that you can do this. 
We're going to do this so that they know your power. That they know your life. It goes back to that song, By Your Grace. Lord, then I'll love like you. Speaking words of you. Jesus living like you. See, it's only by his grace can I do anything. Only by his grace can I do anything. I don't have it on my own. I don't. But in his grace, I do. But the problem with living out in his grace, y'all, is this. So many times, we wrap ourselves up in grave clothes. Even though we're alive. Because see how many of y'all would say, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, you've come to that time in your life and you said, Jesus, I want you to be my Savior and my Lord. Jesus, I give you my life. How many of you know, I have come to that point in my life. He is my Lord and Savior. I've given him my life. How many of you, is that you? Come on. Woo. Testify if that's you. All right. So a lot of you, a lot of you know, he's my Lord. He's my Savior. So why in the world, if we're alive, because see, remember what I said at the very beginning? If the Son has set you free, you are free indeed. Why in the world, if I'm alive, would I wrap myself up in grave clothes? Wouldn't I look pretty stupid? Because go back to our little fashion show. Nobody is really going to come out, except for Ralph, maybe, wearing all that different sports paraphernalia. But at the same time, how many people are all about their sports, all about practicing? Which, by the way, if you're in sports, you need to practice. You've got to practice. All about doing all that. And if I have time, I'll break open the Word of God and read a verse. But if I don't have time, I'm good. See, I love to lift. I love lifting weights. I love exercise. And when we moved here, because of the schedule of when I need to get Jenna to school and all those kind of things, I realized if I'm going to go lift weights Monday through Thursday, this boy's got to get up at like 5.30 and be out of the house at about 6 o'clock to get to the gym. Let me just tell you how much I love 5.30. Not at all. This morning the alarm went off. And I was just laying in my bed, and I was just like, seriously, I don't want to get up. But then I remember, yeah, I do, because I want to go lift. That's important to me. So I'm going to get up, and I'm going to take the effort. I'm going to take the effort, because I want to do that. Some people are like, why would you get up that early? Again, I want it. How should that be any less and different than my walk with Christ? How should that be any less and any different than my walk with Christ? In fact, shouldn't my love for Christ be that much greater that I can't wait to spend a minute with Him? On Wednesday mornings, I do this a lot of times too, especially Wednesdays. When Wednesdays get going so crazy, we've got all this stuff going on. Wednesday mornings, I disappear from over here. For like 30 minutes to an hour, and I just disappear from the sanctuary, or maybe I'll come in here, shut everything off, and shut everybody out of here, and I'll just worship for a while. Just me and God. I'll just sing to Him. Just sing a love songs to Him. And then I'll pray for a while. And some of you are like, you know, you notice when I leave worship, my eyes are closed a lot of times? That's because really I'm not singing to you. Now, if I'm singing a song about being crazy, whatever, I don't mind looking around y'all and all that. But when I'm sitting there singing, it's only by your grace. Can I do anything? With all the love in the world, Matt, it's not your grace that I can do anything, so I don't need to look at you when I'm singing that song. All right. I need to look at the one I'm talking to. Shouldn't my love for God be that much more? But see, what we do is we wrap ourselves up with whatever else it is. Some people are like, I don't have time for devotion. But you know what? They're playing that biggest game of Call of Duty, and they can sure enough play that for hours. But they don't have time to do a quiet time. Sister can watch. The Bachelorette, and make sure that she catches all the episodes and all the backstory news. But I just can't find time to do my quiet time. For you, maybe that's why God made commercials. I don't know. What do you think? Find time. Find time. I'll guarantee you, if I looked at my wife, and I'm like, 
Yeah, Lisa, I want to talk to you. I really want to, but you know what? If you don't mind, can you just actually be quiet? Because, like, the Criminal Minds finale is on tonight. Like, Seriously, all right, so no. Just shh, shh, shh. We need to watch this. Because, true story, I don't, was, I don't know if it was a week or two, a week ago or two weeks ago, I get to the house and Criminal Minds finale was on. True story. And I'm like, oh, okay, I finally got home. It was like 9, 15, 9, 30, somewhere in there. I get in there and I sit down in the chair and I look at Lisa and she even had it paused and ready to go. And we sat there talking for like over an hour. Over an hour. And I'm sure both of our minds was like, okay, this is better than come our minds. It was funny though, when we got to bed, Lisa goes, no, we will be watching that tomorrow night. <laughs> okay. But what was more important, the stupid TV show or my wife who didn't see me all day being able just to touch base with me and me touch base with my wife? What's more important? You see what I'm saying? We get so caught up in everything else. Sports is awesome. I'm all about that. Your friends, it's great to have all your friends. It's so good. But when you're so trapped behind all your friends that you can't have time with your Savior, you're so wrapped up in trying to please everybody else. I know the fashion thing was extreme, but for real, Girls, let me just tell you all this right now. I'm so glad I'm a guy. T-shirt and jeans, t-shirt and shorts. See ya. I'm good to go. Y'all people that change outfits five times before you walk out of the house. I don't get that. Because I'm not a girl. Praise God. All right? That's y'all saying. But I'm just telling y'all. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Girls, we, guys may make light of it, but girls, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're wearing the wrong thing, let the looks begin. Right? Right? Y'all know what I'm talking about, don't you? You've got to have that look. You've got to have it. Really? And we act like it's not necessarily important. But follow me here. We can act like it's not important. But at the same time, guys, we don't understand some of the grief some of these girls get for not wearing the whatever. But I'm going to promise you this, ladies. The ultimate opinion that you need to be concerned with is that of your Savior. That of your Savior. Is what you're going to wear something that he's going to want to turn away from? Just saying. It may be the hottest new style. It may be the hottest new thing. But if it doesn't bring glory to his name, if people can't tell whose you are by what you wear, then what are you doing? We act like we don't come in like Tyler did, wearing all these wrapped up grave clothes. But a lot of times, yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. We let ourselves get so wrapped up in everything but Jesus. And I love what Jesus does. He's not worried, watch me now, about how nasty Lazarus is going to smell. He's not worried about it. Kind of like he's not worried about how nasty somebody thinks some girl is, or how nasty somebody thinks some boy is. He's not worried about that. Because, see, when he comes in, you can be as nasty as anything. When he comes in and says, take your great clothes off, I'm bringing you to life. When that happens, you're not nasty anymore. You don't smell hello anymore. Now he calls you out to life, if he's the one who calls you out to life, See, your friends and your computer and your everything else can't do that. Great things. Friends are great. I'm not knocking a TV show or knocking a computer or whatever. Knocking your fashion. Do your thing. I'm not knocking sports. All about it. But if you get so wrapped up, you're missing Jesus letting you be alive. You're the one trying to stay nasty. Come to life. I love what even Jesus does. Is if you look at verse 44, the dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. And Jesus said to them, Did he say to Lazarus? Did he say to Lazarus? He said to them, that's right, he said to them, them, the people that were there. He says to them, Take off the grave clothes and let him go. He said, to these guys right here, for real, take off his grave clothes. 
So come on. Help a brother out. You like him? Come on, y'all. Help him out. Take off the grave clothes. They came out to do this for him. <laughs> and it may be awkward for a moment. True story. Sometimes that happens. But see, he can't do it all by himself. They wrap him up so tight when they're dead. So it says, come on, y'all. Help him take off the grave clothes. Why? Because see, Tyler doesn't need to look like a fool hopping around with some strips of linen all around him because see, Tyler is alive. And you know what? He wanted the others to come to him and help him take him off. And a lot of times, what some people do is, even the Christians to each other, what some people do is they're like, oh, yeah, but remember, Tyler? These were your great clothes. Here, why don't you put it back on? They look good on you. Y'all like, hey, we don't do that. Do we not? Do we not? How about this? And you know her? All she does is gossip. She's so trashy. Yeah, but she's saved now. I don't care. I don't care. We just try to dress her back up. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying that you don't gossip. You really know that. But you know what I'm saying? We dress her back up. Have you seen how he treats people? I'm just saying. Okay, so he screwed up. So he sinned. So he fell short of the glory of God. Just like everybody else. Because all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. So he did. Mm, I, don't, I don't like it. Dress him back up, baby. Dress him back up. Why? If Jesus said, take the grave clothes off, I will promise you this. Catch me on this one. If Jesus said, take the grave clothes off, I promise you, I don't want to be the one putting the grave clothes back on somebody. Right, right. Because that's me saying, hey, Savior, hey, Jesus, hey, one who has my eternity in your hand, you want their grave clothes off, but I just want to let you know, hey, he needs to cover up a little bit more of his old grave clothes, so I'm going to cover him back up a little bit. Woo! Pretty bold, right? To tell Jesus, I want the grave clothes back on the one that you said take them off of. Where do you want to be? Where do you want to be? I don't know about you, but I want to walk in the life that I'm meant to walk. I want to walk in the life that is truly life. But keep going, because watch what starts to happen as great clothes come off, Lazarus is alive. Now watch starting in verse 45. Watch what happens. You think these people ought to be all rejoicing. Watch where we go. Verse 45. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did, they put their faith in him. They put their faith in Jesus. But some of them, went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. And then the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting of the Sanhedrin. What are we accomplishing, they asked. Here is this man performing many miraculous signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him. And then the Romans will come to take away both our place and our nation. <coughs> then one of them, named Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year, spoke up. You know nothing at all. You do not realize that it is better for you that one man die for the people then the whole nation perish. He did not say this on his own. But as high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the Jewish nation. And not only for that nation, but also for the scattered children of God, to bring them together and make them one. So from that day on, they plotted to take his life. You guys, now you've got this man who is alive. I don't know about you, but if I got to see this happen, I mean, have you all seen a dead man last? Just say, any of y'all ever see somebody that's been in a tomb for four days, step up and go, hey, what's going on, guys? Anybody ever been there? That might freak you out and trip you out just a little bit. But if you saw that life come to life, wouldn't you rejoice? Wouldn't you be pumped? Because you'd be like, no way. No way. So the one who brought that one to life, wouldn't you kind of put a little bit of trust in them? They must know obviously what they're doing. They obviously have something going for them. Some of these people rejoiced in that, but watch what others did. Others that were there went to the Pharisees and were like, y'all need to know what Jesus did. And what did the Pharisees want to do? That weren't there watching what happened? We got to shut Jesus down. Not, we need him to go tomb to tomb and call everybody out to life. They're like, we got to shut Jesus down. And not just shut Jesus down. If you go over to John chapter 12, verses 10 and 11. This is crazy. Verses 10 and 11. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well. 
For on account of him, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and putting their faith in him. Did you catch that? They wanted to put Lazarus to death too. Because because of Lazarus' life, because Lazarus is here today, because Lazarus came out of the tomb, had the grave clothes taken off, people are going, ooh, Jesus is real. And so what do they want to do? If they want to prove that Jesus isn't real, they got to kill him and get rid of him and shut him up so they can have their way. Not a whole lot different, by the way, just so you all know, than the world today. Not a whole lot different than the world today. Do you know that the ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union, they talk about how they're for everybody's civil liberties. That's not totally true. They're for everybody's liberties, but the Christian. Christian, don't you be talking. You have no right to speak up. But yet, if I'm a Muslim, I'm allowed to speak anywhere I want. You know what? If you're going to let the Muslim speak anywhere he wants, you better let me speak wherever I want. That's all I'm saying. You're going to call it, call it. But if I can't talk, neither can they. Be fair. Do you follow what I'm saying? But see, that's not what they're about. The more and more the minority, you know what it's really becoming? The American Christian man. The American Christian man. You've got the women's rights that have risen up. There should have rights. Don't get me wrong on that one at all. I mean, hello. Okay, Bible's pretty clear about that. But in doing so, they've been pushing the man down. But not just the man. The Christian one, he talks about his faith in God. His walk with God. Shut him up. Shut him up. Shut him up. And that's real. And that's true. Look around. Talk to your parents. I promise you, they know. They know. <laughs> Why? Why would anybody want to get rid of the Tyler who came out in new life? You see, you're representing what Jesus has done. And the longer you're around, the worse it's going to be for us to get our way. The longer Christians talk about their marriages with their spouses and how the Bible had called out what a marriage should look like between a man and woman and they become one flesh. It says that. That they become one flesh. The longer they talk about that, the harder it makes the homosexual agenda for them to be able to say, no! We didn't be able to have ours! Well, that's not, that's not what God says. You can do your thing in your worldly way, I guess, but you want to turn around and act like it's God's way, don't go there. I don't expect a non-believer to act like a believer. They want to have their thing? That's their thing, I guess. But don't ever step up and say, well, God says it would be okay. Because no, baby, Scripture's clear. And so you know what? To make their way be true, they're going to shut me up. Shut me out. That's nothing new. John chapter 12 tells us they tried to do it to Lazarus too. See, y'all, some people know when, when you come to Christ, and I'm not really going to go there with certain songs or whatever, names and whatever, so just let that be. We've talked about it before. When you come to Christ Jesus, your battle begins. Because the world doesn't want you walking in the new life that you can have. Abby, the world doesn't want you to shine. The world wants to hide you away. Period. Period. Ashley, you head off to college. The world doesn't want you to shine. The world doesn't want you to be bold. The world wants you to shut up and get in your place so it can have its way. The cool thing about all this, guys, is go back to this point. There's only one that can look at you with the power and authority and say, come on now. I'm bringing you to life. Hey, y'all, take the great clothes off of her. Help her out. There's only one who has that power, and that's Jesus Christ. Out of nothing, he made everything. 
everything. Why I would ever reject him, I don't know. But I do know this. He gives me grace. He lets me start over. He reminds me when I kind of start being stupid. I'm going to call it what it is about myself. I'm talking about myself, not y'all people. When I start to go back to some of my old ways, and I start to dress up a little bit, because for some reason, I think this might look good. I'm thankful that he reminds me, David, stop. Stop. I called you to life. Called you to life. Don't be picking up those very clothes. Don't be doing it. Let it go. Let it go. Lift me up. Lift me up instead. Y'all, I don't know what your very clothes are. I don't know yours. I know mine. I don't know where you struggle, but I know where I do. And all I'm saying is, I'm so thankful faithful God, the faithful creator, nothing could keep him away. He ran to me and he poured his love over me so that safe in him I may be. You catch that? He ran to you and poured his love over you so safe in you, so safe in him you may be. He did that for he said, take them grave clothes off. I got you now. Jesus, you don't know what they're going to say about me. You know what? I know what they're going to say about you because they already said that about me. Don't worry about what they're going to say about you. Worry about what I'm saying about you. You know what I'm saying about you? You're mine. You're my child. I'm calling you to life and life more abundant. So come on. Come on. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to bow your heads and just think for a moment. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed. There was a group of y'all earlier that said that you know that if you were to die, you know that you go to heaven. You said, man, I come to that time where Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. How many of y'all would say that know that Jesus is your Lord and Savior? How many of you would say, you know what, every now and then, David, just like you were kind of doing for a second, I kind of put my grave clothes back. I kind of put my old self back on. How many of y'all would say that's you? These were right over look, it's just me. Yeah. You know, I did there in the walk of time. You know how many got that old thing that you know you probably should have thrown away or sold at the garage sale? Would you think for a moment about what that grave clothes piece is for you? What is that grave clothes piece for you? What is it? Would you be willing to lay it down? Would you be willing to let the power of God be seen in your life by taking off the grave clothes and showing that you're alive? Would you be willing to show that? How many of you would say, David, I feel like I'm in the tomb. I feel like I actually haven't come out to life yet and I know I need to come out to life. How many of you would say that that's you? Again, nobody's looking, it's just me. How many of you would say that's you? All right, all right. Several of y'all. None of y'all are alone, man. You're not alone. What I'm going to ask is, in just a minute, we're going to play like a little invitation song. We're going to do that song, All You, that we did, that I introduced to y'all tonight. But I'm going to ask that some of my adults would actually kind of slip up to the, the front sides, if you will, the front sides, and be available. And y'all, if you want to come out of the tomb tonight, can you grab your friend next to you, the brachi, whatever, and go to that, go to an adult and say, hey, I want you to come out of the tomb. I want to be able to lift Jesus up. I want my grave clothes off. I want to be alive. Go to them and do that tonight. Surrender it tonight. Some of the adults are up front, some are in the back. I got people all around this room that would just love all over you, student and adult life. So right now, would you just pray with me? 
Let's pray with him. Father God, for those in this room, the Father, they're struggling, that they know that they need to come out of the tomb, I pray, God, that you would give them the courage that they need to stand up, to come out, and God, to go talk with somebody so that tonight they can find themselves safe in you. They can find themselves alive with the life that is truly life. Father, for those that are, are saved, God, those that are believers, Father, I pray for them that, God, if, if they've been putting my back on some grave clothes, I pray that tonight you will help them to take those off God, you help them to surrender those things. God, I thank you that you let us live in a country that is free. I thank you that you let us live. We have opportunities to build relationships. God, to have certain possessions. And Father, to, to have friends. To be able to play things like sports and all that. I thank you that we have that freedom. God, may nothing get in the way of lifting up your name. May our lives be used, no matter what they're about, may our lives be used to bring you glory. God, have your way in this place tonight. Adults and students alike, but I thank you that you could have cared less how nasty I was. I thank you that you gave me life. It's in your name that I pray.